Hey everyone, Jim from Australis. Here we go, a Tura carbon fly. Two piece fly rods from a WSB tackle. My favorite people in the whole world. Now, I've just cut the end off the uh, fly line because I wasn't happy with the leader. Now, what we're gonna do is show you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Now, notice here how I'm not pulling on the line really tight. All I want to do, right, is they get that fairly close to where I want to actually put the knot on here. So here we go, right? Move it up a bit closer. Yeah, a little bit of spittle. And just gently, gently form the knot. I'm not going to go right the way and tighten it, okay? So what I'll do is I'll just get this closer. A lot of people make the mistake when they tie knots, they go, Ugh! right? Instead of just gentle, gentle, Form your knot before you set it, okay? And what it'll do is it'll save you a lot of grief out on the water because you're only as good as your knots, okay? So, here we are. All right, now, that's gonna get me out of trouble, okay? Now, if you don't have, alrighty, any leaders with you, as I don't, there you go folks, a beautiful. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to show you a beautiful little knot known as a centaur knot, okay? Pioneered by the great Australian fisherman Dick Lewis at the 1974 Brisbane Boat Show. Okay, now here we go and it's a really easy knot. I use it from everything from deep sea fishing to fly fishing. Watch, once, twice, three times before we go into a corny Lionel Richie song. I'm still trying to get the sleep over that one. Right. Rightio, we've formed one side. Now. Now, we've got the other side. Once. Okay. Oops. Once, twice, three times. Okay. Oh. It's a bit of a debacle. What happened there? Come on. Naughty boy. Oh. Okay. There we go. Not formed. Oh, not happy with that kink, but anyway, it's only going to get snagged anyway. Right, what we do, cut them really close, pick up the rubbish the later. There we go. And there we go. Right. This is the lovely two-piece Atura rod. Look at the lovely loop on that. Look. Look at that for a nice, tight, crisp loop. Loop. Okay? Normally, to do that, you'd have to spend hundreds or thousands. Look at it, just want to unravel. Okay? Four now, folks, this is known as a beadhead woolly bugger. Okay? This, without the bead head, in dams, is a great fly because it looks like so many of our species here. Now the other good thing about this fly is it's going to sink. So, the only place that we've caught any fish is on the right hand side okay and look at this for a sinker whoa yeah beautiful okay so what we're going to do is yeah a little bit of line management when you're fishing in fast water okay you don't need too long a leader right and you don't need too much line out you need enough in case your big fish 
gets your fly, turns sideways in the current, gives you a finger sign with its fins, and goes, right, Jack, we're on here. Okay? So, yeah, it also helps if you get it in the stripping basket, Jimbo. Uh, up there for thinking. Down there for dancing. And in the middle for a good time, apparently. Right, now. Whew, slowly, slowly. Going to... Whoa, 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 whoa. Not overbalance. Oh, that hurt. Okay, now, I'll tell you why woolly buggers are such a great fly. They look like a nightfish, a marin, a leech, a juvenile lamprey. Also, they look like a lot of fish that swim in our waters, right? So therefore, if that'll pass quickly in front of a fish, it should take it theoretically. Now, I don't need much of a cast here, what I'm going to do is just watch my fly line, bring it down. Okay, it's just going to turn in the current there. All right, that was a leaf. Now, okay, once again, this is a good thing about an eight foot five six weight, folks. Right, just a little let that swing in the current there. Okay. Okay. Not much of a back, ooh. Okay, we're on. Le fish. Le big fish. Oi, come on. Ah, uh, folks, I think this is a fairly decent perch. Told you it looked like a marin. Oh, come on. Ah. Alrighty. Now, that's got a fairly decent bend in it, folks. Okay. That was second cast. Now, for those of you that thought my cast was rubbish, you're probably not far off the mark. Oh, no, that's not a perch. That's a trout. So, and he's probably a little bit bigger than a yearling. Oi. Now, okay. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna leave that poor bugger, right, to just float it around in there. Okay, now. What I've got in here, right, is a hook remover. Please tell me I've got a hook remover. Come on. Now, while he's in the water, he's okay. Okay, now, for those of you that are spin fishing gurus, right, um, I creamed that water with spinners before for minimal results. Now, I've got my second cast and caught a trout. Now, see this hook remover. Give it some slack. And in the fast water, I'm using eight pound line there. Now this fish doesn't need to leave the water, I'll show you. Right, come on matey. It's all right. Right, come on. I'm not even gonna touch it. Grab the fly. There he goes, he's off. Beautiful. Rainbow trout are especially susceptible to woolly buggers due to their diet. Funnily enough, you'll catch more brown trout on olive woolly buggers than you will wool on black ones. 